a lot has changed in 10 years. 10 years ago, it was probably the darkest hour of banking if you go back to 2009. So when we started the bank, uh, it was probably the best time, the perfect time to start a bank. Most banks were retrenching, nobody wanted to lend, everybody was worried about their existing loan portfolios. So we were able to come out of the box and grow quite uh, rapidly. Uh, we went public in 2011, and here we are 10 years later uh, celebrating our 10-year anniversary. Uh, it's been an amazing business expansion. It's lasted 10 years. What's good for the economy is generally good for banks. So we've enjoyed it, uh, and, and we hope to keep enjoying it. But uh, the thing that we worry about as a bank is uh, how long will this carry on, and where is the, the end of this business cycle? Is it a year away? Is it two years away? Hopefully, it's 10 years away. Well, th that's just the cyclical factor. What about, uh, as I said, the, the structural factor, the size of bank you are? The big banks have have really grabbed a lot of market share. We talk about the BB&T and SunTrust merger, which is very much in your backyard in the sure. Florida space. And one big reason they said they needed to do that was so they could pool their amount they're investing in tech, the big guys each spending $10 billion each. C can you compete with them? Uh, yes, we can, and we do it every day. I, I think of banking eventually evolving to a sort of a barbell structure of this industry. You're gonna have very large behemoth universal banks like JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, BFA, and so on. And you're gonna have more specialized banks uh, like us, which will cater to one or two or three niches and, and specialize and, and earn our economic return in those markets. We don't, we don't, banks like us will never be universal banks and do everything for everyone. We'll do a few things for a few people, but we'll do them very well. So those, that's what eventually the industry will uh, uh, evolve to, and, and it's happening with the SunTrust BBNT merger as, as a latest example. Uh, there are 6,000 banks still in, in America, which is kind of unique. No other country has that many banks. Uh, eventually, consolidation will continue, uh, and event you'll end up with, with, with a structure where there are very large banks and, and mm -hmm. highly specialized banks. I, I'm sort of curious about what you said about the business cycle. What's your point of view right now, given the loan activity you see, the capital markets activity? Yeah. We have this yield curve inversion that people are no longer talking about. Yeah. Where are we? So conflicting signals is what I would say is a story. When we look at our loan book and we look at our, our clients, how they are doing and how, you know, how their businesses are doing, we feel we are very encouraged that everything is good. But when we look at uh, our Bloomberg screens and, and what's happening on, in, in the marketplace, uh, there are signs that... Uh, your, your CNBC TVs, continue. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> CNBC screens, uh, and, and uh, we see some signs that, that give us some pause. Especially fourth quarter of last year, there were a lot of uh, signs uh, in the capital markets, which pointed to uh, trouble down the, the, uh, down the stretch, but not when we see what's happening in the real economy, not what we see when we're talking to our borrowers. And, and tra what about trade? Is uh, the corporates, the small, medium-sized businesses you lend to, are they nonplussed about trade, or are they very uh, No, th there will be some impact uh, from, from the trade disruption if, uh, if it gets you know, beyond what it is today. Uh, we are based in South Florida and New York. Both economies do, do uh, have a big element of trade, uh, uh, and it will be impacted. Uh, will it be big enough to cause a recession? I'm not sure. Uh, I think it'll be fine. I think it's more noise uh, at this point in time than, than, than real trouble. Quick question on the administration. I know Wilbur Ross, the Commerce Secretary, was a big shareholder until very recently. Um, the administration came in saying they wanted to deregulate, especially for small and medium-sized banks. Did that happen? Uh, I, I would answer that in, 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 in two ways. One, there hasn't been any major deregulation. It's not like Dodd-Frank has been uh, reneged on or pulled back. There have been some uh, changes in regulation, like the Crapo bill last year. But what's more important than, than changing regulation is actually the attitude of, of regulatory bodies towards businesses, towards the private capital. Uh, and that has changed, and that has become much more reasonable. So I would say, the expectations from regulators, for, from, from the banks that they're regulating, haven't changed much, but the way they're engaging with banks has changed for the positive in a, in a, in a very material way, and that's good news.